The Way Home or Face the Fire The Survival Plan for All Human Plus Beings Chapter 8 The Shining Example The Light of the World After trying over and over again to teach people to stay away from religions and talk only to him for guidance, having already sent enlightenment to the many prophets, God decided that the only solution was to send Prince Michael and to put him in a human animal to show the way you have to be to be able to go home. So that people would know that Jesus was special, God arranged the miracle virgin birth and sent a spaceship to guide the shepherds to the stable and later on druid kings to their house so people would know that he was here. The kings, on returning to their own countries, would tell people what they had seen and the news would spread. The star of Bethlehem was a spaceship. It could not possibly have been a star. Can you tell when a star is over a stable? You cannot even tell when a star is over a large country, never mind a tiny stable. Remember too that the star guided people who were walking or on camels. This was all done to show people, look, this man is different. Take notice of him and listen to what he says. What did he say? I am the way, home. I am the way that each and every one of you has to be before you can go home. John 10, 7 to 9 and 14, 2 to 6. John chapter 10, verse 7. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out, and find pasture. 14.2 In my father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, and receive you unto myself, that where I am. There ye may be also. And where I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not where thou goest. And how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Not one man cometh unto the Father, except by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet have you not known me? Philip, he that has seen me has seen the Father. And how say you then, show us the Father? The Jewish people had become so evil and arrogant, Exodus 33, 5, with their customs and religious doctrines and traditions, that they refused to accept that Jesus was the promised Messiah, and that he brought the living word, John chapter 1, 1 to 5, of God, Mark 7, 7 to 9. For the I Am had said unto Moses, Say unto the children of Israel, Ye are a stiff-necked people. I will come unto the midst of thee in a moment, and consume thee. Therefore now put off thine ornaments from thee, that I may know what to do unto thee. John chapter 1. In the beginning was the word, truth, in Hebrew is Nazir, and the truth was with God, not with Lucifer, Satan, the devil, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and life was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Mark 7.7 7. How be it in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the traditions of men, as the washing of pots and cups, and many other such like things ye do. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandments of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. This shows how the devil uses your ego to fool you. Jesus disappeared after his birth in the Druids' visit for more than 30 years, with the single exception of when he was 12 years old, Luke 2.42. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. At the feast of the Passover, when he was talking to the priests in the temple and amazing them with his great knowledge, he disappeared because he had to learn in private exactly what it was like to submit to human limitations and to be, with all intents and purposes, a normal human plus being. He had to learn everything about all the different types and degrees of temptation and how to overcome them. If he didn't, he couldn't possibly help others to overcome theirs or to be able to complete his mission. Before you can help anyone, you have to not only understand their problem, but how to solve it too. To do that, you have to have solved it yourself many times over. He had to experiment with women and had to learn how to resist their temptations. 
because his mission was far too important to let anyone or anything get in the way. He needed time to get used to controlling his human-animal body that Mary's body had made and that he was locked inside of. He had to learn to control it to such a fine degree that he could not be tempted for love for a woman into failing to complete his mission. Satan sent as many beautiful and sexy women as possible to try to pull him away and even offered him the whole world if he would serve him instead of God. Jesus obviously could not start his work until his body was in his late thirties because as a teenager no one would take him seriously and he would be far too inexperienced in worldly matters to be able to cope with the abuse and ridicule without losing his temper. Jesus' ministry was not from 30 to 33 years of age, but from 33 to 40 years of age. Daniel 9.27 And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation the lake of fire, and that determined shall be poured out upon the desolate. Today's calendar is seven years out in arrears, and the year is actually 1993 A.D., not 1986. As it was, even in his late thirties, he could not get the majority of the people to take him seriously. Once his training was completed, he started to teach people to leave organized religion and go into their closets to speak to God. Jesus was pulling people away from the church and their organized religion and was teaching them by the sea and on the mountainsides and the priests were losing their prestige and the respect of the people and their power over the people and they were also losing money. The church's lucrative business was crumbling so they had to find a way to stop Jesus and they tried to trick him into saying something for which they could prosecute him by their own laws slash legislation, not God's laws, and have him killed. But he was far too clever for them. Mark 12:13, Luke 11:54, and Luke 20:20. 20, 20. And they sent unto him certain of the politicians and of the Herodians to catch him in his words. Luke 11:54, laying wake for him and seeking to catch something out of his mouth that they might accuse him. Luke 20:20. 20, 20. And they watched him and sent forth spies which should fiend themselves just men that they may take hold of his words, that so they might deliver him unto the power and authority of the governor. The priests who tried to claim to represent God were trying to murder God's son, legally, when God said you must not murder. I say legally, referring to their customs and traditions, the Talmud, that they had made up themselves to allow themselves to break God's laws. They made their own laws, thereby making God's laws obsolete and effective. Mark 7, 9, and 13. Mark 7, 9. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition, making the word of God of no effect through your tradition. Talmud, which ye have delivered, and many such like things do ye. They made up their own laws, thereby making God's laws obsolete, ineffective, and gave themselves the right, question mark, to murder Jesus. Hosea 4, 6 and John 16, 1-4. Hosea 4, 6. My people are destroyed for lack of my knowledge. Because thou hast rejected my knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. John 16, 1-4. These things I have spoken unto you, that you should not be offended. They shall put you out of the churches. Yea, the time cometh, that whosoever killeth you will think that he does God's service. And these things will they do unto you, because they have not known the Father, nor me. But these things have I told you, that when the time shall come, ye shall remember that I told you of them. And these things I said, not unto you in the beginning, because I was with you. Today the situation is many times worse, because of men having made up so many thousands of their own laws, to enable themselves, the rich, to break God's laws, that mankind has forgotten God's laws the royal perfect laws of liberty even exist. God's laws, statutes, and judgments, etc. are the only ones that exist. In all of today's many thousands of unlawful human laws slash legislation and judgments do not exist as far as God is concerned, except in your minds. Matthew 5.18 For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no way pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Do not be fooled, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. 
Galatians 6, 7. Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Anyone making up, administering, or enforcing unlawful human laws slash legislation and judgments will be severely punished by God. The other people who permit the making of unlawful human legislation and judgments punish themselves because of the effect that these unlawful and unjust laws have on society. Men's unlawful and unjust laws slash legislation also punish the innocent more than the guilty. Jesus gave the parable, illustrative story, of the vineyard, world, and the owner of the vineyard, God, and his husbandmen, or workers, priests, and the servants of the owner, the prophets, and the son of the owner, Prince Michael, Christ, Matthew 21, 31-46, Mark 12, 1-13, and Luke 20, 9-21. Whether of them twain did the will of his father? They say unto him, The first. Jesus saith unto them, Verily I say unto you, that the taxmen and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and ye believed him not. But the taxmen and the harlots believed him, and ye, when ye had seen it, repented not afterward, that ye might believe him. Here another parable. There was a certain householder, which planted a vineyard, and hedged it around about, and digged a winepress in it, and built a tower, and led it out to the husbandmen, and went into a far country. And when the time came of the fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the husbandmen, that they might receive the fruits of it. And the husbandmen took his servant, and beat one, and killed another, and stoned another. Again he sent other servants more than the first, and they did unto them likewise. But last of all he sent unto them his son, saying, They will respect my son. But when the husbandmen saw the son, they said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him. Let us seize on his inheritance. And they caught him, and cast him out of the vineyard, and slew him. And when the Lord therefore of the vineyard cometh, what will ye do unto those husbandmen? They say unto him, He will miserably destroy those wicked men, and will let out his vineyard unto other husbandmen, which shall render him the fruits of their season. Mark 12, 1. And he began to speak unto them by parables. A certain man planted a vineyard, and set a hedge around it, and digged a place for the wine fat, and built a tower, and let it out to the husbandmen, and went into a far country. And at the season he sent to the husbandmen a servant, that he might receive from the husbandmen of the fruit of the vineyard. And they caught him, and beat him, and sent him away empty. And again he sent unto them another servant, and at him they cast stones, and wounded him in the head, and sent him away shamefully handled. And again he sent another, and him they killed, and many others, beating some, and killing some. Having yet therefore one son, his well-beloved, he sent him also last unto them, saying, They will respect my son. But those husbandmen said among themselves, This is the heir, come, let's kill him, and the inheritance shall be ours. And they took him, and killed him, and cast him out of the vineyard. What shall therefore the lord of the vineyards do? He will come and destroy the husbandmen, and will give the vineyard unto others. And have ye not read the scripture? The stone which the builders rejected is become the head of the corner. This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in your eyes. And they sought to lay hold on him, but feared the people, for they knew that he had spoken the parable against them. And they left him and went their way. And they send unto him certain of the politicians and of the Herodians to catch him in his words. Luke chapter 20 verse 9. Then began he to speak to the people this parable. A certain man planted a vineyard, and led it forth to the husbandmen, and he went into a far country for a long time. And at the season he sent a servant to the husbandmen, that they should give him of the fruit of the vineyard. But the husbandmen beat him, and sent him away empty. And again he sent another servant, and they beat him also, and treated him shamefully, and sent him away empty. And again he sent a third, and they wounded him also, and cast him out. Then said the Lord of the vineyard, What shall I do? I will send my beloved son. It may be they will respect him when they see him. But when the husbandmen saw him, they reasoned among themselves, saying, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, that the inheritance may be ours. Cross-reference Ezekiel 48, 21-22. So they cast him out of the vineyard and killed him. What therefore shall the Lord of the vineyard do unto them? He shall come and destroy these husbandmen, and shall give the vineyard to others. And when they heard it, they said, God forbid. And he beheld them, and said, What is this then that is written? 
the stone which the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner. Whosoever shall fall upon the stone shall be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. And the chief priests and the lawyers the same hour sought to lay hands on him. And they feared the people, for they perceived that he had spoken this parable against them. And they watched him, and sent forth spies, which should fiend themselves just men, that they might take hold of his words, that so they might deliver unto him the power and authority of the governor. They asked him, saying, Master, we know that thou sayest and teach rightly. Neither accept you the person of any, but teach the way of God truly. Through the parable of the vineyard, Jesus was foretelling that the priests, who had beaten and murdered God's prophets, messengers, would murder his son, and that God will destroy the priests and the non-believers in the fire on the last day, if they do not repent. The Jewish people never repented because they refused to accept that Jesus was God's son, incarnated, and to follow his teachings and example. The New Testament is absolutely full of messages against priests, their organized religions, lawyers, and politicians. It was the priests and their religion that had Jesus nailed to the cross, leaving a permanent testimony to the world of how priests in organized religions belonged to Satan and had murdered the human animal that was worn by Christ, God's Son. Just how obvious does it have to be before you can see the truth? After all Jesus said and went through on the cross to show that organized religion is wrong, there are more religions today than ever before. You can be sure that on Prince Michael Christ's second coming, when he brings the same message again, the message and the truth will never change. All the priests in the world, Satan's unwitting employees, and especially the Pope, will be the first to call him insane and a blasphemer. The Pope will probably try to excommunicate him and tell him that he, Prince Michael, will never go to heaven for saying that God is his father. What a joke. It is the Pope who will never go to heaven. Heaven is Christ's home. He is the Prince of Heaven. The Pope, however, is a servant of Satan and will burn with him. The priests all have their very lucrative business to protect and their positions of respect and power over the people to protect, too. On the second coming, Christ will not be called Jesus because he will have a new human name, Revelation 3.12. And he will, first of all, try to peacefully destroy all organized religions. Revelation 3.12 Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. The priests and religious people will say that he is a false prophet, but it is the organized religion and its false interpretations and teachings that is the false prophet, as it has always been. Hopefully he will succeed whilst in human form because this time it will not just be a gesture but a last chance. And the last day will be right behind him. Surah 4361. And you will already have had almost 2,000 years to get it right and go home. And Christ the Mahdi shall be a sign for the coming of the hour of judgment. Therefore have no doubt about the hour. But follow ye me. This is the straight way. You are still here. Why? If I were you, I would be very worried and be doing my utmost to be like Jesus. Perhaps you all want to die? Christ explained everything about where he and you came from and what each of you have to do to go home. He explained that he was the soul inside the Son of Mary and that he was zillions of years old when the body that he was using was less than 50 years old. John 1, 5 and 8, 57 to 58. King of Kings Bible, John 8, 48 to 49 and 17, 24. King of Kings Bible, John 8, 48 and 49. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and have you seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was born, I am. Cross reference, chapter 17, verse 5. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. John 17:24. Father, I will that they also, whom you have given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which you have given me, for you loved me before the foundation of the world. He also explained that Mary was not his mother, and that her body only made the body that he was using. John 6:42 and Matthew 12:47 to 50, 22:45 and Mark 331 35 and Luke 
eight nineteen to twenty one but that she did not make him john six forty two and they said is this not jesus the son of joseph whose father and mother we know how is it then that he saith i came down from heaven then one said unto him behold thy mother and thy brethren stand without desiring to speak with thee but he answered and said unto him that told him who is my mother who am my brethren and he stretched forth his hand towards his disciples and said behold my mother and my brethren for whosoever shall do the will of my father which is in heaven the same is my brother my sister and mother matthew twenty two forty five if david then called him lord how is he his son mark three thirty one to thirty five there came then his brethren and his mother and standing without sent unto him calling him and the multitude sat about him and they said unto him behold thy mother and thy brethren without seek for thee and he answered them saying who is my mother or my brethren and he looked round about on them which sat about him and he said behold my mother and my brethren for whosoever shall do the will of god the same is my brother and my sister and mother luke eight nineteen to twenty one then came to him his mother and brethren and could not come to see him for the press and it was told him by certain which said thy mother and thy brethren stand without desiring to see thee and he answered and said unto them my mother and my brethren are these which hear the word of god and do it christ explained not only was he not jewish but he was not from this planet john seven thirty four to thirty six and eight twenty three in the king of kings bible john eight fourteen seventeen fourteen and eighteen thirty six john eight fourteen and he said unto them ye are from beneath i am from above ye are of this world i am not from this world king of kings bible john seventeen fourteen i have given them thy word and the world hath hated them because they are not of the world even as i am not of the world king of kings bible john eighteen thirty six jesus answered my kingdom is not of this world if my kingdom were of this world then would my servants fight that i should not be delivered to the jews but now is my kingdom not from hence and about the spirit being spirit and the flesh being flesh john three six and that the spirit is the only thing which is important john six sixty three and that the body is worthless king of kings bible john three six that which is born of the flesh is human and that which is born of the spirit is spirit a spirit being a human plus being king of kings bible john six sixty three it is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh profiteth nothing the words truth that i speak unto you they are spirit and they are life let the dead bury their dead which means that those people that honor the body and those persons of men kings queens presidents priests etc etc and worldly treasures and thereby still condemned to death should bury what they value a dead body is only a worthless lump of dead meat that never was a person just an animal body that they used the real person is still alive their soul but only until the last day matthew eight twenty two but jesus said unto him follow me and let the dead those under god's death sentence for treason bury their dead cross reference revelation twelve seven to nine and there was war in heaven michael and his angels fought against the dragon lucifer and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not neither was their place found any more in heaven and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and satan which deceiveth the whole world and he was cast out to the earth and his angels you were cast out with him matthew twenty five forty one cross reference luke nine fifty five but he turned and rebuked them and said ye know not what kind of spirit ye are of cross reference revelation twelve seven to nine and matthew eight twenty two people are only sad at funerals for selfish reasons that is because they feel sorry for themselves they should feel glad for the person whose body has died because they have moved on to the next lesson do not be afraid of those who can kill your body fear only those who can kill your soul on the last day that is god and his soldiers guardian angels matthew ten twenty eight and luke twelve four to five matthew ten twenty eight and fear not them which kill the body but are not able to kill the soul but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hellfire luke twelve four and i say unto you my friends be not afraid of them that kill the body and after that have no more that they can do but i will forewarn you whom ye shall fear fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell fire yea 
I say unto you, Fear him. Seek the truth, and you will find it. How can you expect to find the truth when you are not seeking? Luke 11, 9-13 And I say unto you, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Seek the truth, and you will find it. How can you expect to find the truth when you are not seeking, and are wasting your time, watching soap operas and sport on television, or are looking in the wrong places, that is, organized religion. Jesus told you everything that you need to know, including that, if you earned your right to go home, you would be angels again, Matthew 22:30, Luke 20, 34-36, and John 10, 34, Matthew 22:30. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven, Luke 20:34. And Jesus answering said unto them, The children of this world marry, and are given in marriage, but they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that world, and the resurrection from the dead, neither marry, nor are given in marriage, neither can they die any more, but they are equal unto the angels, and are the children of God. Being the children of the resurrection, resurrection, resure of who is right, God. John 10.34 Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said, Ye are gods? And about reincarnation, Luke 20.38 and John 9.2. Luke 20.38 For he is not a god of the dead, but of the living, for all live unto him. John 9.2 And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned, nor his parents but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. He said, Which planet is heaven? Revelation 2.28 and 22.16 King of Kings Bible 30.16 King of Kings Bible Revelation 30.16 And there was great light, and there stood before me the Savior, the Christ. And he spake thus, that I may know the authority of the angel, and bade, Watch for the star that was foretold by the prophet Jacob, that you will know the time of the second coming, when I will enter all hearts. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the communities. I am the root, source, and successor of David, Ezekiel 21:27, and the bright and morning star, Ezekiel 21:27. I will overturn, overturn, overturn it, and it shall be no more overturned, until he come, whose right it is, and I will give it him Shiloh, Genesis 49:10. Genesis 49.10 And the scepter shall not depart from Judah to Joseph, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh comes. From Joseph, Ephraim, verse 22 to 24, And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. He said which planet is heaven, which was confirming Isaiah 14.12, How you have fallen from heaven, Lucifer, Satan, Iblis, son of the morning star. Isaiah 14.12 How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning star? How art thou cut down to earth, which did weaken the nations? He said which planet is heaven, which was confirming Isaiah 14.12 How you are fallen from heaven, Lucifer, Satan, Iblis, son of the morning star. King James Version, which is the authorized version, and the second most accurate, which was confirmed again later by the Quran. Surah 53:49 and 86:1 to 4. Surah 53:49, that he is the Lord of Sirius, the mighty star. Surah 86:1 to 4. Tariq, the night comer or the morning star, by the sky and the night visitant therein. And what will explain to thee what the night visitant is? It is the star of piercing brightness. Revelation 30:16. There is no soul but has a protector over it. He told you exactly what you have to do to earn your right to go home. I am the door. No man goes home to God except if he is like me. John 10, 7-9 Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. 
I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out, and find pasture. I am the way home, the truth, and the life. John 14, 2-6 In my father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And where I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not where you go, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Not one man cometh unto the Father except by me. Which means, I am the way you have to be. What I am telling you is the truth. And I am the way to eternal life, immortality. Greater love than this has no man, that he lays down his life, human life, for his friends. John 15:13. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his self, life, for his friends. Jesus did it for his enemies, that is, all of you. Luke 9:55. But he turned and rebuked them, and said, Ye know not what kind of spirit ye are of. Cross reference Revelation twelve seven to nine and Matthew eight twenty two. He that loves his life in this world and likes being an animal and collecting worldly treasures and wealth shall lose his soul, die in the fire on the last day. And he who hates his human life in this world and doesn't like being an animal and having worldly wealth at the expense of others and who always fights for good, no matter what the cost, shall win his freedom, immortality, and right to go home. John 12:25, Mark 8:34-38, and Sarah 16:104-111. John 12:25, He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. Mark 8:34, And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny his self and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel's, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? For what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever, therefore, shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed, when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Surah 16, 104. Those who believe not in the signs of the I Am, I Am will not guide them, and theirs will be a grievous penalty. It is those who believe not in the signs of I Am that forge falsehood. It is they who lie. And anyone who, after accepting faith in I Am, utters unbelief, except under compulsion, his heart remaining firm in faith, but such as open their breasts to unbelief, on them is wrath from I am, and theirs will be a dreadful penalty. This because they love life of this world better than the hereafter, and I am will not guide those who reject faith. Those are they whose hearts, ears, and eyes I am has sealed up, and they take no heed. Without doubt, in the hereafter they will perish. But verily, to those who leave their homes after trials and persecutions, and who thereafter strive and fight for the faith and patiently persevere, thy Lord, after all this, is oft forgiving, most merciful. One day every soul will come up struggling for itself, and every soul will be recompensed fully for its actions, and none will be dealt with unjustly. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man worldly wealth to go to heaven. Matthew 19:24. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Do not collect treasures on earth, where moths and rust destroy them, and thieves break in and steal them. Earn treasures in heaven, where they are safe forever. Which means, earn favor with God by being and doing like Jesus, and thereby earn your pardon and go home to heaven. Why exchange your right to go home to heaven and live forever for all the treasures of this world? Luke 16, 19-31 There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died, and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died, 
and was buried. And in hell fire he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember you in your lifetime received your good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things? But now he is comforted, and you are tormented. And besides all this, between us and you there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from here to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from there. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou would send him to my father's house. For I have five brothers, that he may testify unto them, lest they come into this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, No, Father Abraham, if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they will not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Why exchange your right to go home to heaven and live forever for all the treasure in this world that you can never keep in certain death? What good will it do you to own the whole world for a few years and pay for it by losing your immortal soul forever? All the money you made will never buy back your soul. Everything in this temporary world is not worth one soul. Luke 12, 19 to 21 and Zephaniah 1, 18. Luke 12, 19 to 21. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, You fool, this night your soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be, which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself, and is not rich toward God. Zephaniah 1.18 Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to deliver them in the day of the I Am's wrath. But the whole land shall be devoured by fire of his jealousy. For he shall make even a speedy riddance of all of them that dwell in the land. The American Indians had it right, until the greedy white men went and ruined everything for them. The white men went to America to have a fresh start, and to leave all the things they disliked behind them, instead of which they took it all with them, and inflicted it on the Indians. The white men lied and cheated the Indians, who were honorable and friendly people. That was when they weren't murdering the Indians. The Indians welcomed the early settlers and helped them to survive, teaching them what they could and couldn't eat, and about snakes and hunting, and survival in general. The settlers repaid them, and their kindness, with lies, deceit, and death. The Indians lived with nature, in harmony, in an idyllic existence, until the white man arrived and began to systematically murder them, almost to extinction, because of greed. Once the black slaves were given their freedom, they complained of being second-class citizens, whilst the poor Indians, whose country it had been for thousands of years, were not even considered to be citizens, or even human-plus beings. The Indians tried to teach the white man to live in harmony with nature, to ensure their own survival. The arrogant white settlers ignored the Indians' advice, calling them ignorant savages and continued to destroy and pollute the country until pollution became so bad that they had to consider it a real threat. It became so bad that in the last generation a new subject emerged in universities called ecology, which is about protecting nature and the environment. In other words, it took the arrogant, intelligent, quote-unquote, white men hundreds of years to find out that the, quote, ignorant savages slash Indians were right and much more intelligent than themselves. In more recent times, the, quote, civilized, question mark, world has, quote, re-educated, question mark, the Indians and other developed nations into believing that they need, question mark, their consumer products. The consumer society, first of all, creates a, quote, need, question mark, and then supplies that need, just like a drug pusher creates a need for drugs so that he has a lifelong customer for his merchandise. Addiction to material things is very similar. Advertising creates the need, question mark, and then comes the supply. The materialistic society taught the Indians and other non-materialistic natives of other developed, question mark, countries to feel that they need material goods so that they have another market for their products. The second benefit to the big businessmen and corporations, then, once they have these people hooked on their products, is that they can use this want to steal from them, use and abuse and manipulate the natives away from living with God in nature, and interlearning Satan's evil ways, that is, serving mammon, materialism.
Mahatma Gandhi understood all of this and managed to defeat the British without aggression, peacefully by refusing to be materialistic and teaching his people to go back to their old ways and not to buy British goods, which caused terrible unemployment in Britain and forced the British to give in to some of Gandhi's wishes. Gandhi won by playing the British at their own game and hitting them where it hurts, materialistic people, that is, in their pockets. Today, in various parts of the world, the natives are cutting down vast areas of the rainforests, destroying the forests and their natural environment and wildlife for money to buy materialistic goods that they don't really need. The rainforests are the world's greatest supply of life-giving oxygen, without which the whole of mankind in nature will die. Oxygen for life in exchange for money and death to buy things that they do not need. The rainforests, in producing oxygen, also get rid of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere so that it not only doesn't poison everyone, but also doesn't cause a, quote, greenhouse effect, which will overheat the planet and change all the world's weather patterns. 2 Esdras 5.5 Melt the ice caps and destroy everything. 2 Esdras 5.5 King of Kings Bible the blood, life, shall drop out of the wood, deforestation, and the stone, Messiah, Christ, Mahdi, shall give his voice, and the peoples shall be troubled, and the air goings, wind patterns, shall be changed, El Nino, trade winds, etc. They are selling what does not belong to them, to buy death for everyone. God owns the rainforests and the whole planet. These peoples have lived quite happily without all these goods for thousands of years, so why should they need them now? Where is the world going to take all of its money to buy oxygen when there is none left? First you send in missionaries to teach them Satan's religions and about all the wonderful inventions and teach them possessiveness and convince them that they own the land and then that they need to become materialistic and then they are hooked. The stage is set for Satan to lead them on his merry dance into the fire with you. The only thing that you need is God and to survive and go home. And anything else is a want, not a need. Before you buy anything, ask yourself if it will help your spiritual growth and help you to go home. If it won't help you to be able to go home, you don't need it. Don't let Satan con you. You did not come here to destroy and pollute nature and exterminate the animals. You came here to learn to be good. Man is trying to destroy nature, and the day that he succeeds, you are all dead, and you all think you are sane. This planet belongs to God and the animals, not to you. The animals have more right to be here than you do. It is their home, not yours, and they have the right to survive. Animals are not polluting and trying to destroy nature and themselves, or you. Neither do they poison themselves with smoking, drinking alcohol, and taking drugs. You are the only one stupid enough to do that, and you have the audacity to call them dumb animals, and to think that you are better than them, and that you have more right to be here than they do. What arrogance and stupidity. You are evil, they aren't, and they are better than you. And when you have been destroyed, they will still be alive. Genesis 8.21 and Ezekiel 39.17-20 Genesis 8.21 And the I am smelled a sweet savor, and the I am said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more every thing living, as I have done. Ezekiel 39.17 and you, son of man, thus saith the Lord I am, speak unto every feathered fowl, and to every beast of the field, assemble yourselves, and come, gather yourselves on every side of my sacrifice, that I do sacrifice for you, even a great sacrifice, upon the mountain of Israel, that ye may eat flesh and drink blood. Ye shall eat the flesh of the mighty, drink the blood of the princes of the earth, of rams, of lambs, and of goats, of bullocks, and all of them fatlings of Bashan. And ye shall eat fat till ye be full, and drink blood till ye be drunken, of my sacrifice, which I have sacrificed for you. Thus ye shall be filled at my table with horses and chariots, with mighty men, and with all men of war, saith the Lord I am. Animals only kill to eat, and in self-defense, as God intended. They do not kill for, quote, pleasure, like you evil creatures do. Learn from the animals and nature, like the Indians did, and become environmentalists. Stop being so arrogant, blind, and stupid. In spiritual, and therefore real, matters of life, the Indians were hundreds of years in front of the white man. Unfortunately, the white man was ahead of the Indians in technology. The bow and arrow was no match for the gun. 
The Indians were friendly and honorable and God-fearing people, the great white spirit, which he really is, showing that the Indians were ahead of the white man in spiritual matters. Respecting and worshiping Wakantaka, the great white spirit, also known as Manitou. The Indians appreciated spiritual and not worldly values, owning only the necessities of life and moving freely about on God's land. They moved south in the winter and north in the summer, searching out the best climactic conditions to live in. The Indians did not have the audacity to say they owned the land because they knew that it belonged to God, not them, and that God graciously allowed them to live on it and provided them with food, water, and means to create shelter. When the white men asked the Indians to sell them some of, quote, their land, the Indians laughed at them, but, being friendly and not wanting to upset or offend their new friends, they humored the, quote, simple-minded white men, agreed to accept their money and play their silly game because it seemed to make them feel better and happier. How can people own the land? It belongs to God. How have people managed to pay God for their title deeds? Why do people always want to own things? The more you own, the more problems you have. The more you have, the more there is to protect from thieves or clean or go wrong and to have to have repaired or replaced. It is self-perpetuating and a vicious circle eventually turning the materialistic person into a slave to his own possessions and their maintenance and perpetual increase. You can break the circle and get off the treadmill, if you want to. You do not own your possessions. They own you. The love of money is the root of evil. Simplicity is the best way. Always seek the simple things in life. It is not the man who has the most that is rich, but the man who needs the least. The man who needs the least is rich because he has more freedom, not being a slave to material possessions, mammon, and does not have to slave his life away to obtain material objects that he can never keep, either for himself or for his wife. Nothing in this world lasts forever, and nothing is perfect, as an incentive to leave the things of this world and go home, where things are perfect and live forever. Even Jesus was not perfect whilst in this world, and he said so openly. Matthew 19.17 and Luke 18.19 Matthew 19.17 And he said unto them, Why callest me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Luke 18.19 And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? None is good, save one, that is God. It is not possible to be absolutely perfect whilst wearing a human animal body, with all the temptation of this world. The fact that even Jesus was not perfect should give everyone more encouragement to strive harder to be like him. He told you how to get God's help and guidance to overcome your temptation by doing God's will, the Lord's Prayer. Your will shall be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Matthew 6.10, 7.21, and 12.50. Matthew 6.10, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Matthew 7.21, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, only he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Matthew 12:50. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother, sister, and mother. He told you how to get God's help and guidance to overcome your temptation by doing God's will. The Lord's Prayer, Your will shall be done on earth as it is in heaven and by keeping the commandments, including the 11th and 12th. 11th, John 13.34 and 15.12. John 13.34 A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. 15.12 This is my commandment, that ye love one another, as I have loved you. And 12th, Matthew 7.1 Judge not that ye be not judged, that he gave personally to his disciples, Matthew 5.19, John 14.21, Revelation 14.12 and 22. In the King of Kings Bible, it's Revelation 14.12 and 30.14. Matthew 5.19, Whosoever shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. John 14:21 He that hath my commandments and keepeth them he it is that loveth me and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father and I will love him and will manifest myself to him Revelation 14:12 Here is the patience of the holy ones here are they that keep the commandments of God 
and the faith of Jesus. King of Kings Bible, Revelation 30:14. Blessed are they that keep and do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and shall share divine love, and know paradise and bliss, and may enter in through the straight gates into the city, New Jerusalem. Cross-reference Matthew 7:13 to 14. Enter ye in the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way, that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. To get God's help, Jesus said that you have to be born again in the Spirit. John 3, 3-6 Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water, human, and then is born later, from above, as spirit, being, the real self, which is not human. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God, who is a spirit being. That which is born of the flesh is human, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit, a spirit being a human plus being. To get God's help, Jesus said that you have to be born again in the Spirit and become like little children. Matthew 18, 3-4, Mark 10, 15, and Luke 18, 17. Matthew 18, 3-4. And he said, Verily, I say unto you, except ye be converted, and then become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself, as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Mark 10:15. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. Luke 18:17. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, shall in no wise enter therein. To get God's help, Jesus said that you have to be born again in the Spirit, and become like little children, with childlike, 100%, not childish, faith and trust in God's protection. Being, quote, born again of the Spirit means that you must be born again as your spirit and stop thinking of yourself as being a human and start to think of yourself as being your real self, your spirit, soul, and act accordingly. Whilst ever you think of yourself as being a human and think in a human way, you automatically condemn yourself to always being a human until you are executed on the last day. You must become your spirit, real self, and control the body, and not the other way around, where the animal body controls you. God's secrets are hidden from those who, quote, think they are wise, prudent, and who are arrogant, and are revealed to babes. Matthew 11.25 and Luke 10.21 People born again in the Spirit, Matthew 18.3-4 and Luke 10.21 and John 3.3 3. Matthew 11.25 at that time Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hid these things from the wise and the prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Luke 10.21 In that hour Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. Matthew 18, 3 and 4 and he said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted, and then become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever, therefore, shall humble himself as this little child, the same is great in the kingdom of heaven. Luke 10.21 In that hour Jesus rejoiced in spirit, and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and the prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for it seemed good in thy sight. John 3, 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in and with their spirit being, and in truth. John 4, 24. Always being truthful. John 4, 24. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in their spirit being, and in truth. Jesus explained that mothers and fathers are not really your mother and father, but that the bodies that they are using made the body that you are using, but that they did not make your soul any more than their parents' bodies made their souls. Matthew 12:47 to 50 and John 6:42.
Matthew 12:46. While he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without, desiring to speak with him. Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to speak with thee. But he answered and said unto him, that told him, Who is my mother, and who are my brethren? And stretched forth his hands towards his disciples, and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren, for whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. John 6.42 And they said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he said, I came down from heaven? That does not mean that you should disown them or treat them any differently. He also explained that when you start to do God's will, quote, a man's enemy will be the people of his own household. Love your enemies into changing, because the devil will use them and human animal emotion to try to pull you back from doing God's will. Matthew 10, 34-37, Luke 12, 51-53, and 14, 26, 27, and 33. Matthew 10, 34. Think not that I come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. Cross-reference, Revelation 1, 16. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and that a man's foe shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he that loveth son or daughter or any one or any thing more than me is not worthy of me. Luke 12:51. Suppose ye that I come to give peace on earth? I tell you no, but rather a division. For from henceforth there shall be five in one household divided, three against two, two against three. The father shall be divided against the son, and the son against the father, and the mother against the daughter, and the daughter against the mother, and the mother-in-law against the daughter-in-law, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. 14, 26, and 27. If any man come to me, and hate not his father and mother, and wife, and children, and brethren, and sister, yea, and his own human life, also, he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever doth not bear his cross, and come after me, he cannot be my disciple. So likewise, whosoever he be of you, that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Satan will use the members of your family, because they are the nearest to you, and are the people you appreciate most, and of whom you normally take the most notice, and whose advice you usually cherish and respect. Mika 7, 6. For the son dishonoreth the father, and the daughter rise up against the mother, the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's enemies are the men of his own house. Satan will use them without their knowledge or understanding what they are doing, so you cannot blame them directly for their words or actions. They will try to advise you whilst genuinely believing that they have your best interest at heart. However, they will be advising you from a material and human point of view, not a spiritual point of view, because they do not know about spiritual matters in God's magic. They do not know that God is real, and they do not know what you have already found out from God himself since you started talking to him directly and properly and started doing his will for you. Don't get upset, be firm, and strive to convince them that you are right. Don't let Satan trick you into becoming angry and making the situation worse, and don't run away. Explain to them calmly and lovingly the magic of direct communication with God himself and love them into seeing your point of view, and strive to get them to talk to God directly themselves. If you don't, they are all going to die on the last day. And you don't want that to happen to people you love, do you? Love conquers all. Jesus also said that there can be no, quote, sitting on the fence, and that there is no middle ground. He who is not for me is against me. Matthew 12:30. He that is not with me is against me and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. Those who are not on God's side, doing God's will, and actively fighting for good, are actually helping Satan to win. Those who do nothing are allowing the devil to win, and so are really helping him. They are only cheating themselves, really, because by allowing Satan to win, they are helping to make the world a worse place, and they have to live in it, on top of which they are not earning their right to go home. Jesus said that you cannot serve mammon, material values, and God at the same time. Matthew 6.24 Because if you love material goods, you will not be able to fight for God, because you will be afraid of losing your material possessions, or your human life, or both. Matthew 6.24 No man can serve two masters, 
For either he will hate one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and materialism. Because if you love material goods, you will not be able to fight for God, because you will be afraid of losing your material possessions or your human life, or both. That is when you need faith in God's protection and his promise of eternal life. He that gains his life in this world shall lose it, and he who loses his human life for the sake of all shall gain his eternal life and his right to go home. Mark 8:34 to 38 And when he called the people unto him, with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny his self, and take up his cross, and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake in the Gospels, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man, if he shall gain the whole world, and lose his own soul? For what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me, and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also the Son of Man be ashamed, when he cometh in glory of his Father with the holy angels. This means that he who allows Satan to intimidate him into not fighting for good, always playing it safe to protect his worthless human life and worldly and therefore temporary possessions, shall lose his soul being real life in the fire, and that he who fights for justice and the good of all without fear because of his real faith in God, shall win his soul's pardon, freedom, and right to go home. Jesus explained about spiritual levels when he said in Mark 12:32 to 34 to the scribe that because of his answers to Jesus and his mental attitude, he was not far from the kingdom of God. Mark 12:32, And the lawyer said unto him, Well, master, thou hast said the truth, for there is one God, and there is none other but he, and to love him with all your heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the soul, and with all the strength, and to love his neighbor as himself, is more than whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered discreetly, he said unto him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And no man after that durst ask him any question. This meant that he was on a high spiritual level, and did not have much more to learn before he could go home, always providing that he did not lose his faith, and allow himself to be scared or bribed off by Satan, and go backwards. Jesus also taught about the laws of karma with what he said to all the blind, crippled, or sick people that he healed using the force. He said that because of their faith, right then, at that moment in time, their sins were forgiven them, and to go and sin no more. This was not referring to the sins of the present lifetime that they were living. They had been very sinful, evil, arrogant, and selfish in their previous lifetime, and so they had been locked inside bodies that were born crippled or blind, etc., to punish them for evil and harm that they had done to others in their previous lifetime. John 9, 2. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Being blind or crippled, etc., would not only punish them, but also teach them humility, being now dependent upon the charity of other people, perhaps even the same people that they hurt. Ironic? Divine justice. Blindness would teach them to value spiritual things and love instead of material things because they could not see material things, thereby making them of less value and less desirable. They had obviously been very materialistic in their previous life, claiming things of worldly beauty and hurting many relatively good people in order to obtain these things. Beware all you materially rich people who are poor in spirit, especially you who sell misery and death to obtain worldly, valueless treasures. Luke 16, 19-31 There was a certain rich man, which was clothed in purple and fine linen, and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate, full of sores, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died, and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died, and was buried. And in hell fire he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember you in your lifetime received your good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things? But now he is comforted, and you are tormented. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from here to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from there. 
Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou would send him to my father's house. For I have five brothers, that he may testify unto them, lest they come into this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, No, Father Abraham, if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they will not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. You know who you are, and what is more important, so does God. Matthew 19.24 And again I say unto you, It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. You are always exactly where and who you have earned the right to be by all your past actions and thoughts in eternal time. Perfect karma. It is not a crime to be poor in worldly goods. On the contrary, it is a crime to be rich in worldly goods, and you have been selling your soul to obtain them. God, however, will not allow you to give these things back to him on your human's death to buy back your soul, and in any case, they were never really yours. They were only loaned to you by Satan in payment for doing his wishes. These things don't even belong to Satan. They belong to God, because he owns the whole world. He created it all and doesn't want any of it. He, being spirit, has no needs. What would God want silly worldly treasures for? The devil has conned you again. Never underestimate the devil's cunning. That is why you have to cling to God and trust only him and his guidance, and not your own wisdom, question mark, so that Satan cannot fool you again. That is why the first commandment is the first, and most important commandment of all, and all the other commandments hang upon it. Learn true and lasting values, the values of heaven, that is, love and unselfishness. Blessed are the poor and worldly possessions who are rich in spirit, that is, heavenly wealth, for theirs will be the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 5, three. Blessed are the poor, the humble, that are rich in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Individual socialism from a personal choice is the only way, Jesus. You did not come here to have a good time, which usually means a bad time, and collect material wealth. You are in prison, on death row, and you came here to learn to be good, earn your pardon, and right to go home, or, if not, be executed. Jesus used, quote, the force to work miracles in the new covenant. When you have, quote, blind faith, which does not really mean blind, it means 100% total faith in God, with your eyes, human and spiritual, wide open to all the angles from which Satan can use people to attack you. You can then become a channel for, quote, the force. If you do not have blind faith, you block the channel, and the force can neither flow through you nor into you to heal you. Quote, the force came from God and flowed through Jesus, and he directed it into the people who had unblocked channels, blind faith, and the force cured them. God, through Jesus, only cured the people who had total faith that Jesus was his son, incarnated, and that he could cure them. Your 100% faith in God's power and in me has made you whole, and your sins from your previous lifetime, which caused you to be blind, crippled, or sick, as a punishment in this lifetime, are forgiven you. Go and sin no more. John 9, 2. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Are your channels unblocked yet? Faith is the key to the, quote, magic door, the door to miracles and a God-guided life. Walking always in the healing light and the entrance to the kingdom of God and the return to your immortality, real memory, identity, and superhuman powers. Samson used the force to pull down the heathen temple. David's stone was guided by the force to kill Goliath. The force parted the Red Sea, etc., etc., etc. Jesus was transfigured on the mountain and his face shone like the sun because his soul, being of light, chapter 1, was shining through his face like Moses and his clothes were white and shining, quote, as white as the light, and whiter than anything on earth could make them. Matthew 17.2, Mark 9.3, and Luke 9.29. Matthew 17.2, And was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. Mark 9.3, And his raiment became shining, exceeding white as snow, so as no whitener on earth can white them. Luke 9.29, And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered, and his raiment was white and glistering. This was caused by a force field put around him to protect the body that he was using from the heat and effects of the spaceship. Then, after God finished speaking to Jesus, a bright cloud came over the disciples, and the cloud of smoke engulfed them. Luke 9.34, While he thus spoke, there came a cloud, and overshadowed them, and they feared as they entered into the cloud. 
And God said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. Matthew 17, 5. While he yet spoke, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. How then can Christ, the Spirit within the man, not be the Son of God, when God himself said so? God never lies. Lies are Lucifer the devil's invention. John 8.44, King of Kings Bible, John 8.35. You are of your father the devil, and the less of your father will you do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar, and the father inventor of it. Jesus said, You must not be priests, Matthew 23.8, and you must not listen to priests, Matthew 15.14, 16.12, 23 9 13 and 24 matthew 23 8 be ye not called priest etc for one is your teacher even christ and all ye are brethren matthew 15 14 let them alone they be blind leaders of the blind and if the blind lead the blind both shall fall into the ditch or pit Sixteen twelve. then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread but of the doctrine of politicians, and of those who believe not the prophets, and the hereafter. Matthew 23, 9 And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. But woe unto you lawyers, and politicians, hypocrites, Pharisees, Pharis, Persian converts to Judaism, who were the politicians, hypocrites. For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for ye neither go in yourselves, neither allow you them that are entering to go in. See King of Kings Bible, Enoch, 93.4 to 104.6. But go into your closets in private to speak to God and do his will. He said that you must do and live the Lord's Prayer, Matthew 6, 9 to 15. Not just repeat it like a silly parrot that does not understand what it is saying, and that includes the singing of hymns and the communal or individual saying of written prayers. Matthew 6, 9 to 15. After this manner, therefore pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts and trespasses, if we truly repent, as we forgive our debtors and those who trespass against us, if they truly repent. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Repeating written prayers once a week or up to five times a day is no good, because the rest of the time you are automatically talking to Satan. Matthew 6, 7. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions, as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Praying means talking to God mentally, telepathically, 24 hours a day, every day, and consulting Him on everything and getting His guidance and help to enable you to be able to do His will. Surah 42.38, Ephesians 6.18, and 1 Thessalonians 5.17. Surah 42.38, Those who hearken to their Lord and establish constant prayer, who conduct their affairs by mutual consultation with the I Am, who spend out of what we bestow on them for sustenance. Ephesians 6.18 Praying constantly, without ceasing, with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto, with all perseverance and supplication for all holy people. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 Pray without ceasing. Initially it will be a conscious effort, but eventually, when you have had enough practice, it will become as natural and unconscious an effort as breathing. If you are not actually talking, you must still continue to listen and acknowledge his presence and the contact, keeping the line open. The moment you break or allow the contact to be broken, you are allowing an opening for Satan to use, and he will jump straight in with both feet. Christ foretold of his second coming to his disciples at the Last Supper. He told them that he had many things still to tell them, but that they could not bear to hear them yet. John 16:12. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. But that the time would come, his second coming, when he would not talk in proverbs or parables, and would show them clearly about God. 
John 16.25 and Revelation 10.7. John 16.25 These things I have spoken unto you in Proverbs, but the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. Revelation 10.7 But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, as he hath declared to his servants the prophets. He said the second coming would be at a time when they would not think that he was coming, Luke 12.40, and that he would enlighten the whole world, Matthew 24.27, Luke 17.24-37, and Revelation 10.7. Luke 12.40 Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when you think he will not, Matthew 24.27 For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Luke 17.24 For as the lightning that lighteneth out of the one part under heaven, shineth unto the other part under heaven, so shall the Son of Man be in his day. But first must he suffer many things, and be rejected of this generation. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise also shall it be in the days of Lot. They did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven, and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day he which shall be upon the housetop, and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away, and he that is in the field, let him likewise not return it back. Remember Lot's wife. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. I tell you, in the night that there shall be two men in one bed, the one shall be taken, the other shall be left. The two women shall be grinding together, and one shall be taken, and the other left. The two men shall be in the field, and one shall be taken, and the other left. And they answered and said unto him, Where, Lord? And he said unto them, Wheresoever the body is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Revelation 10.7 But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished as he hath declared to his servants the prophets, and that God's truth, gospel, must be published amongst all the nations. Mark 13.10 And the gospel must first be published among all nations. He said the churches and their riches would be demolished. Luke 21.5-6 And as some spoke of the temple, how it was adorned with goodly stones and gifts, he said, As for these things which ye behold, the day will come, in the which there shall not be left one stone upon another, that shall not be thrown down. And that all real and practicing believers of all nations, who had the mark of God in their forehead, direct communication with God, would survive the last day. Luke 13.29 and they shall come down from the east, and from the west, and from the north, and from the south, and shall sit down in the kingdom of God. Do you have the mark? Jesus left a question about the second coming. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on earth? Luke 18.8 I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on earth? What do you think? Is there faith left on earth today? Jesus said, If any man does God's will, God will prove to him whether Jesus' teachings are true or whether Jesus has made them up himself. John 7.17 7, If any man will do his will, he shall know the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. You have had two thousand years to test his teachings and find out if they are true, and yet you are still here. Why? Why? The Bible is not just a book of nice stories. It contains the Old Covenant and the New Covenant, contract testament and is a map for your spiritual journey of self-perfection you have to become abraham to begin the journey then become isaac jacob israel joseph moses the prophets and then finally jesus